Hey guys, Greg here. Today we're talking about Hi-Fi and we're going to talk about a nice Phono preamp. I'm up close so you can focus on the item we're talking about. This is my vintage Phono preamp made by Threshold Audio. The, let's see if I can read it, the FET, the Threshold Pho Model FET 10PC. Did I screw up that name? The FET 10 PC. FET is Field Effect Transistor. I'm not an expert, guys. This is one of the nicest phono preamps of its day from the late 80s. And today I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about it. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how to configure it because this thing has a lot of fancy switches and whatnot to set it up properly. And I didn't have it set up properly at first. So if you already know all about phono preamps, skip to the end. I'll show you how this thing gets set up. All right, so Threshold Audio, uh, led by Nelson Pass, one of the most uh, iconic and well-respected audio engineers in the hi-fi world. He had the Threshold Company, and then he went on to create the uh, Pass Audio Company. Pass Labs, I should say. Pass Labs Audio. And today he has First Watt. So he's been at the forefront of uh, high-end and high-fidelity equipment for quite a long time. And he's still around making good stuff. But take us back to vintage late 1980s. This was sold along with a uh, preamp that had the same form factor. It's stacked right up on top of it. This is just a phono preamp. So what is, what is a phono preamp, in case you don't know? If you're listening to vinyl at all, you need a phono preamp. You probably already have one. It might be built into your hi-fi receiver. It might be built into your turntable. Or it might be an outboard, standalone, separate item like this one. Um, either way, what you need to listen to vinyl is to amplify that little tiny weak signal that's coming out of your phono cartridge. Your phono cartridge is a very weak uh, electric generator, believe it or not. And it puts out something like four or five millivolts, thousandths of a volt, and you need a device like this to amplify it so it's uh, enough voltage to drive your amplifier, and that's typically closer to five volts. That's what you call line level audio. And that's what this thing does. Now, this thing is renowned in its day for high quality engineering, and you're not gonna see a circuitry that looks like that today. The gold circuit board instead of the uh, typical green circuit board and this is a dual mono design meaning there's two of everything right in a row for left channel and right channel and by the way I had this thing uh, upgraded with new capacitors I'll tell you more about that story in a bit um, I bought this used if that's not obvious already I bought this at a garage sale I was out riding my bike one day found a garage sale I saw a sticker on this for five, five dollars. She gave it to me for four dollars, gave me a bag to take it home. I was on my bicycle, carried it in a plastic garbage bag on Mulholland Drive. And uh, it did not come with a power supply. I had to pay someone for a uh, outboard power supply. So I did spend a few hundred dollars getting it into shape with the power supply and the upgraded caps. So all these black cylinder things are uh, fairly high-end audio capacitors. Old audio equipment uh, tends to need the capacitors replaced and I never got to hear this one before they were replaced so I have to take the guy's word for it but uh, whatever these are French capacitors. So what are the let's give you a quick little tour of this thing before I get into the settings. Very simple not much going on here. Thick aluminum billet front face plate the Threshold logo. This is, I don't know if it's an LED or just a light bulb, but it turns red when the thing is plugged in. And I used to have wings that uh, fit on here, just put it in a rack. I took those off because I'm not mounting it in a rack. In a rack, not the country of a rack, Iraq. A audio rack. Um, there is no on or off switch on this. These things can be left plugged in all the time. They don't really create heat, they don't draw much power. They're turning a couple of millivolts into a couple of volts, and it's really fine to leave them plugged in all the time, and they can operate at a constant temperature. On the back, we don't have much. We've got the inputs, right and left channel, and the ground 
thingy for your uh, if your turntable has a ground wire. I have Rega turntables do not have ground wires. I have this hooked up to a Rega P7 and your outputs and a very unusual looking uh, power supply cable input. This is a unique power supply that I really haven't seen on anything else, or I should say connector. And uh, there's an outboard power supply that's about the size of two packs of cigarettes. And the goal is to not put the power supply near the unit so they don't create hum with each other. So the power supply is, you know, two or three feet away, maybe on a different shelf. I have this open. I wanted to make a video before I closed it back up. I've had this open because I had to go in here and mess with the switches. This thing is highly configurable. Most phono preamps might have one or two switches, but this has two banks of eight dip switches and two uh, electric jumpers. And I'm going to explain what that is. And um, I had it set up wrong. I had this thing playing for 10 years and didn't realize I had it set up wrong. You can adjust the gain on this, the impedance, and the capacitance. And what does all that gibberish mean? Well, Hopefully it's set it, for, set it and forget it. Open it up, make the settings for your system, close it back up, screw the top back on, and hopefully you're done for another 10 years. But when you do open it up, it does have the chart of what all these dip switches mean, and I'll, I'll get into that just a little bit. And uh, So what I had set up wrong was the gain on this thing. This has two settings for MM or MC cartridges and that stands for moving magnet cartridges which are sort of normal gain and then moving coil cartridges or MC and those are low gain so that needs a lot of amplification to make an MC cartridge work. Which do you have? If you ask the question you probably have MM because MC is fairly expensive, fairly esoteric. Only people with fairly expensive equipment are going to have an MC cartridge. This thing was set up for an MC cartridge when I bought it and I noticed the gain was very high. In other words, when I turned the volume up on my amplifier, everything was like really loud, just like you have it on one and it's like at full blast. Well, the gain was set way too high because it was set for a super low output MC cartridge and I didn't realize that until I just took it apart the other day because when I hooked it up to a different amplifier it sounded all distorted and I'm like what's with all that distortion I probably have the gain set too high turns out I was right and I had to figure out how to lower the gain so let me get into that let's see if we can read this chart the writing is so small um, is this backwards or am I like upside down it's so bizarre I can't read anything okay very important do not adjust gain slides unless equipment is turned off or all level controls are set to the minimum. That's what it says on the top. So this chart on top is the gain jumpers and it kind of shows you where to find them. And they, even with that chart, they were hard to find. Let's see if I can find them today. Uh, somewhere in here. Okay, here we are. Okay, you've got these sets of capacitors and right next to it are these little blue things. You can barely see that. That and the mirror image of that over here is the gain jumper. What does that mean? There's two settings. There's three wires and a jumper cable that connects either two or the other two. So one setting is for a high output 20 dB of gain and one setting is for a regular. I had it accidentally set to the wrong setting. All you do is lift it up and put it on the other two and it takes the gain back to normal. I didn't know that. I, I was screwing around with the dip switches not realizing that an inch away were these jumpers. They're hard to find. So now let's get into the dip switches. There are two banks of dip switches. These things right here. There's two of these. Each one has eight switches. Eight plus eight, 16 total. The top four dip switches handle the impedance adjustment and the bottom four handle the capacitance adjustment and the correct adjustment for my uh, Rega cartridge is 47 kilo ohms impedance that's very common probably the majority of cartridges use 47 K and then 100 picofarads for the capacitance what does that do I don't ask me okay I'm just happy I figured out how to do it so you read that little chart 
and it tells you these little things how to move them. Do do do. Mirror images. Of, well, they're not actually. They're the same top and bottom. So these th two things should be the same. And you can uh, you can mix and match a little bit and dial it in and try different settings. But this thing is meant to be set it and forget it. So once you've um, set it up right, put the lid back on, screw it on, set it, and you're done. And uh, I will I will reproduce uh, the text on how to set these in the notes of the sh of the video here. And that's about all I can say, guys. There's the threshold uh, serial number up in there, if you can see that. And look at this quality construction. You just don't see construction like that anymore. This is like a work of audio art. This is audio porn for you circuit board geeks. They just don't make them like that anymore. Uh, that's it, guys. My first of hopefully many hi-fi videos, the Threshold Model FET-10 PC Phono Cartridge Preamp. Ask for it by name. Did I mention this is a $1,000 piece today that I spent $4 on? All right, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, let me know your comments, what preamps you're using, and have you ever heard Threshold equipment. It's great stuff. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.